<laughs> I continue with the motor. I hope that's the fun part. <laughs> First, uh, let's talk about the uh, internal combustion engines. We've grown up with it. We get so familiar with this technology. It's you know, 150 years old. Everybody knows it. Oh, I hope most body know it. You know, if you ever you know, go to your garage, disassemble your cars and play with it. Low efficiency. It's actually more efficient in generating heat than generating kinetic energy. 46% is theoretical maximum. You will never reach it in reality. That is assuming no friction, ideal world, that never happened. Low performance to weight and size and cost. Right side is a nice new Audi 3 liter, you know, very powerful diesel engine. It's looking at the complexity. More than 200 moving parts inside. It's hugely complex. It costs a lot to produce. And uh, this mechanical complexity gives you a lot of trouble. And also, it needs air. It sucks, right? <laughs> it's by, 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 by sucking air, it's dirty. Yeah, ever open up an old engine, you get black hands all the time. It's dirty and fuel consumption. We got the oil industry coming to play, right? 50% of all the oil is used by those internal combustion engines. And then you got OPEC, you got this and that global ge uh, geopolitical situation. You got oil price, always sensitive issue to the world's economy, this and that. Emission and pollution, it's dirty. You know, it kills people. I have some reports saying that it kills roughly as many people as in accidents due to pollution. You can imagine those mega cities, millions of cars all focused in a small area and just, for example, go to Beijing if you get experience. Vibration and noise, you know, we, we, we grown up with it. We like noise probably, but uh, okay, it, it does create quite a lot of noise and vibration. And then your maintenance requirements, it costs money to maintain, you go to workshop, you get a cost. Wear out and time limit. You don't drive this thing more than, let's say, practically 250,000 kilometers. I hardly know anybody got a car engine run that long before you throw it away. And it's old technology. It's going to reach the end of its life. So we talk about a new technology. Actually, not new. It's quite an old technology, but with tremendous potential in replacing this internal combustion engine. Electric motor, in reality, it always gets more than 90% efficiency. This is a Tesla motor, a 330 kilowatt, immensely powerful motor, water cooled, and size of a small box. You got this, the drive units besides the motor and uh, a small step down gear, all in one unit. It's quite small, and it's a monster. 330 kilowatts out of this, 600 newton meter of torque. It's Tremendous. That's why you see this tremendous acceleration performance. It's mechanically so simple. You just have a single rotor and a single stator, some cooling mechanism and copper wire on the stator and two bearings and pretty much that's it. I would say every car manufacturer would be able to produce this if they want. It's really low cost. It's really simple. Just a bunch of copper, uh, some aluminum, electrical steel, some uh, bearing cost, but not much. It's much cleaner. It's virtually limitless lifetime. This thing can run like a million kilometers before you break it down because just you wear out these two bearings. You know, you, you can try drive it for maybe 30 years, see if it breaks down. It doesn't suck here. The design is much simpler. You can pl place this whenever you, you want. You place it at the front, place it at the back. It doesn't matter. You don't need air. And it just needs battery and electricity. There's no monopoly. Great for global economy. Huge potential, as I will show you later. So we first look at the performance comparison. I mean, this is a nice, clean diesel. Funny, huh? Clean. <laughs> nice dual clutch, all-wheel drive, astronic. Uh, here you got seven gear ratios, and that's the engine performance. And you look at this. This is the torque, and that's the motor power. You see the torque starts to rise to the peak roughly like 1,500 RPM and then soon drop again, just a few thousand RPM later. It's Even though it's already a good new engine, it's bad in performance compared with electric motor. This is a Tesla motor, that same motor I showed. 600 Newton meter peak torque all the way up to roughly 80 kilometer per hour and then the torque drop. And this 600 Newton meter is tremendous because it has only one gear ratio of 9.73. It's 
and to translate it into reality, in order to use this full talk, you need to first load this car. This is already a very heavy car. Load it another 300 kilogram and go to German Autobahn because you don't get a nice highway road in Sweden. You first go to German Autobahn and press the accelerator all the way down and hope that it's a really nice dry weather and in order to use up this talk. In practice, you don't get talk more than this much. The reason is you get a tire friction limit. You buy a nice new tire, wear it a bit few few, few thousand kilometers, and then you get hopefully a friction coefficient like 1.3. What it means is that you could deliver maybe an acceleration out of these tires by 1.3 g in the maximum without tires sp start sleep, uh, sl sleeping, and that's roughly here without too much load. You won't even to be able to use that torque due to the tire limit. This is a rear wheel drive, so it's only two tires delivering all this torque. This is tremendous torque. So you'll be able to accelerate all the way up to like 100 km per hour, only limited by the tire friction. You can't do better than that. You know, you don't, you don't need this much torque. So in reality, since 2014, Tesla basically stopped this motor. It's too much torque. Ah, you don't need that. Then they increase the RPM all the way up to 18,000 RPM. Then they'll be able to drive like 250 kilometers per hour because people only drive fast. So why not? This is too much torque. You, you will always win because you do always win now. With the Tesla new P100, you know, really powerful uh, dual motor, you'll be able to always get 2.5 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, which is the third quickest production car ever and the first two all cost like more than a million dollar each one is a uh, ferrari another one is uh, porsche limited they, they stop producing it's just a few hundred units and message is simple <laughs> especially to european car manufacturers they don't want this but go electric or die i'm serious it's not a joke for youngsters you find the electrical engineer in the automotive sector as a very interesting potential area. So still, if people still wonder about electric cars, I, I think this do. And there would still be this range anxiety. Uh, OK, there's not much range. My diesel car can drive like 1,000 kilometers. But uh, OK, this electric car won't be able to reach that range. We hope to change your mind here. The reason I can't be too technical here the issues with conventional high voltage motors, as we said, all existing cars are driven with high mo voltage motors. And this is basically a zooming view of that cross sectional profile of that Tesla motor. If you, it's not so good image, but then give you an idea. You cut opening on the electrical steel slot, you insert uh, 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 the copper wires, which are having eliminated surface, and with, of course, a thick insulation paper because if you don't get a good high quality paper, somebody gonna get killed. It's high voltage, 400 volts. You don't want that. It uh, needs to have this really good quality insulation paper, and all these voids, all these empty space, are filled with varnish, epoxy varnish. They need to, you know, get it solid, sturdy, and no dirt and dust coming in. But all these materials are bad, super bad in conducting heat. Actually, the only one of the biggest reason you can major reason you can break uh, an electric motor is by overheating. So heat loss and also this bad heat thermal conduction is going to be a major issue. It's always the center wire which gets the hottest. This electrical steel around and you have no other way to cool this center pond. It's always the hottest. So this thing limits the maximum power, maximum uh, torque, highest current density the I individual uh, wire can take and also limits the lifetime. If it's too hot, it wear out, uh, it's it going to damage this insulation, short circuits happens, it's bad. Second, the, this winding, if you ever go to a motor factory, you realize it's immensely complicated manufacturing process for producing, putting those wires into the electrical slots and also having this big ends winding part. That's the Tesla motor, by the way. This is the end winding insulated into epoxy fume. It's really thick fume for, you know, reliability issue, and that make it really bad in conducting heat away. That's sometimes, you know, up to 50% of the whole winding. It's a lot of heat generated here. They are not 
uh, uh, creating any torque whatsoever. They're only creating loss here because there's not much magnetic fields coupled onto rotor. So that's not efficient. We propose a low voltage version. This is what it looks like in conceptual stage. It's basically die casted copper uh, uh, bars. So instead of these wires, you can die cast a single solid copper piece. You got a s small end ring at the end, and then number of bars coming out. They are having insulation paper. By the way, this whole thing runs at hopefully 40, 50 volts, very low voltage. So the insulation paper going to be much thinner. That's also good for conducting heat away. And the whole piece is solid. That's tremendously better in conducting heat all the way through the electrical steel this direction or all the back. You can put massive he heat uh, sinking uh, uh, device there. And each individual bars will be connected to an a, a electric drive, low voltage drive. I will talk about it later, but tremendously better fuel factor, copper fuel factor. It's really making the, the, the efficiency higher. Almost no end one is just a solid copper bar. Production much easier. You got this conventional die casting uh, process. It's much more robust. It's going to be great. So a bit into the drive side. On the left, you have conventional IGBT. That's the exact IGBT that Tesla used in this uh, uh, high, vo uh, high voltage 330 kilowatts uh, inverter. You got 96 of them. And uh, of course, high voltage, a diode-like behavior in the uh, saturation voltage. And they do uh, 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 conduct quite high current if you want. Uh, quite much power rating. It's a big package, by the way, quite a big size, uh, conventional package. And look at the cost. For 4,000 units, each is this much. And if we use low voltage counterparts, I think 240 of this would be sufficient. 60 volts, really low uh, on resistance loss. Uh, still quite good at conducting. I mean, this is really high power density because this package is so much smaller than that. This thing supports dual sides cooling. It's basically just a copper can on top of the silicon die. It's pure copper. You don't get better than copper. <laughs> you got tremendously cheaper price. This is market price available. The reason why there is a huge price difference is just in think consider economy of scale. This is the w uh, uh, you have th orders of magnitudes more in, in uh, use in, in worldwide applications in, uh, using low voltage than high voltage. Having 240 of this will still be a lot cheaper than this 96 of this. That's a lot cheaper and also much better in conducting heat. And by the way, I forgot to one sh mention one key detail. For range issue. Most of the time you drive the car is in very low uh, uh, load situation that the motor operates. It's probably less than 5% of the load. And in that situation, conventional car with conventional IGBT, they have dialed like power loss, which means if you have only 5% of current load, then this in proportionally drop to 5% of conduction loss. But for most most fed, it's basically a, a, a resistor as you know, resistance loss is a square. So if you drop uh, uh, current to 5%, then your conducting power loss is tremendously less. So with that, it means that you can drive, I mean, have a motor uh, with, uh, have, a, have a drive system with much higher partial load efficiency. That's great for the range of a car. So sum it up, what the low voltage car can deliver, these are number conservative estimates. What is for sure is that it's much simpler design. The entire s battery system don't need this high voltage insulation requirement, safety requirement, automatic switch, uh, short circuits, protection, this and that, uh, trouble something. Much better redundancy and robustness. And it's much safer and easier to handle during accidents or in maintenance. And with all these benefits, let's summarize this. It's great to get an electric car. Finally, it gets simple again. Just a small drive unit, immensely powerful, a big battery pack, very simple mechanically, a simple electric steering system and a big chassis. All, all, that's all you need for a super nice car. So thank you very much.
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have time so for some questions to Kent, Niklas or Shane. There's a long history in behind, so you need to go back 100 years. <laughs> the reason why people designed motor in the first place in this high voltage configuration is because at the old time, this Tesla and Edison era, there was no electronics whatsoever. Uh, uh, that's the reason why AC wanes. It's a simple three-phase knife will directly connect the motor as that will rotate. Very easy. No electronics whatsoever, and in order to get a high efficiency distribution network, you need to have high voltage. Of course, people understand that. Higher voltage means lower current, so it's good for efficiency of distribution network, but ease of connection, directly plugging the motor directly online, that will rotate. So all, voltage, all the motors are designed as high voltage. But now comes the 21st century. You, you don't do this direct online anymore. You have a drive in between. And that gives you this new design paradigm. You don't have to design all the motors as high voltage anymore. You could do it in low voltage, uh, as we demonstrated here. That gives you this a lot of benefits. So, any other questions? This is all in early stage conceptual level. We don't even have a research project yet, but we <laughs> recently had the uh, research application to energy agency. We have to just cross the finger and hope for the best. See if they give us money. <laughs> but it's, as we see it, it's certainly very promising. Do you have uh, an idea like uh, how many years still the Tesla will break even it will be a more affordable? Uh, me personally is waiting Tesla Model 3. It comes, should be 18 and 19 and it's at least what they promised is like 30, 35,000 US dollar, definitely not more than 40,000 US dollar, quite a low cost version. Gives you a range, should be around 400 kilometer if as they planned, and that gives you pr pretty much the same price uh, 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 and performance comparison to a uh, Audi A4 or BMW 3 Series. And that would be a, a big game changer. That's why you cut f almost 400,000 people Sending thousand US dollar bill, reserving the car without even seeing the final design. That never <laughs> happened in history before. That shows the huge interest from general public of, of this uh, goods uh, electric car design. But uh, we need to wait for three years until we can buy it here. <laughs> what? Uh, not yet. I prefer to wait until I see the final thing. <laughs> and then pay the <laughs> money, but uh, you know, 400,000 people before you, so you need to wait years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more questions? Okay, uh, if not, thank you, speakers, and thank you for attending this mm -hmm. session. <laughs>